Good afternoon, everybody. Warmly, warmly welcome all of you to come to this session. So I'm, I'm pleased and honored to chair this session on the, with the chair and the founder for the World Economy Forum. I guess you don't need a very much introduction for Klaus Schwab. Everybody knows him. He is a visionary. 44 years ago, he see the world need something to bring the leader together. So he started building this World Economy Forum in a small town in Switzerland called the Davos. But the forum grow, grow strongly, strongly from Davos to Dalian, from Dalian to Dubai, to the whole world. And he's very innovational because he brings so many initiatives to the program. Today, the forum have industry initiatives, have global agendas, have a regional initiatives, bring the young leader all the world to the forums. There's so many ideas, he's always innovative, has all the ideas in his head, he's amazing. And he's a true global citizen. As said, the, really, the mission for the forum is committed to improving the state of the world. I recall two years ago, I was in Jordan, attend the regional forum of uh, MENA. In that meeting, he bring 400 business leaders from Israel, bring 400 business leaders from pa uh, Palestine. Those business leaders together to propose a peace initiatives. He said the business people not only try to do business, but also try to promote the peace. So 400 people together to say the business people should get together to promote the regional peace. It was a very, very moving move. It also bring President Abbas, the President of Israel, the Secretary General of the United States, Kerry, John Kerry, to sit down to talk about how business community can facilitate this peace process I was lucky enough to have opportunity to also attend this meeting as well. So he's always think about the global issues, not only in the business, but also in the political, in the social issues, and particularly in the peace, in improve the humanities. And also, he's a great friend of China. Nine years after the forum set up in, in, uh, in Davos, the Davos received the first Chinese delegation, which is 1979. That year, China started reform. Nine years ago, here in Dalian, the first time the foreign moved out as foreign from Davos to the seaside city, Dalian. And in the past, between the two nine years, 1979, to the nine years ago, today, roughly 36 years, he visited China many, many, many times. He always truly believed the future of China, and he always loved Chinese culture and believed in the Chinese people. But at all, he's an old sweet man, a gentleman with a lot of characters, really a lot of energies, a little bit of stubborn which is a typical character of a sweet. You know, if you dreaming about your office location, you will say, the best idea is my house is next to my office, or my office is next to my house. Which is exactly the situation in the, in the headquarters of the World Economic Forum in Geneva. His house is next to the head office of the World Economic Forum. How happened? Really, Klaus bought his house first, and he always want to buy his neighbor's land to build the head office for the World Economic Forum. So he tried to visit his neighbor, tried to convince him to sell the land to him so he can build the head office for the World Economic Forum. He understand that his neighbor likes to drink. So anytime he visits the neighbor, he brings a good bottle a, a, a scotch. 
He drink the, the, the scotch with the neighbors. Neighbors say, no, 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 don't talk about the land. Talk about everything. Let's drink. So they drink the complete bottle of the whole thing the first visit. So then, after six months, he visits his neighbor again. The neighbor say, no, 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 don't talk about land. Just talk and drink. So they drink the whole bottle of scotch and talk again. In the next 15 years, 15 years, he visited his neighbor 30 times. They drink a total of 30 bottles of good scotch. So finally, his neighbor passed away. <laughs> you can guess why. So the widow called. He said, my husband passed away, but he told me, if you want to sell land, you have to first off class. So class bought land and built a beautiful headquarter of the World Economic Forum next to his house. You see how persistent this person it is. So please join me welcome the chairman and the founder of the World Economic Forum, Klaus Schwab. Welcome, welcome, Klaus. Thank you, thank you, Min. Uh, I have only one regret that it was whiskey and not Mao Tai. <laughs> but uh, listening to you, um, Min, um, I have to say, um, if my mother would still be alive and um, had listened to you, she would be really proud of me. <laughs> um, but no, thank you for this um, introduction. Now I'm here to answer questions. Um, good, good, Klaus. And uh, I was wondering whether you chair the session or I chair the session when you start to talk. Yes, please, let's sit down. So, Klaus, the first issue is what motivated you to set up this water can forum, not say, Klaus Schwab chocolate or Klaus Schwab watch? Or Klaus Schwab University. Or whatever, yeah. yeah. No, when we, when we look at the world and when we look how the world has developed over the last four or five decades, we see the following developments. The world has become much more interconnected. Not only that countries and regions and businesses have become interconnected, I think there's also a much higher uh, interconnection today between politics, business, uh, civil society, academia, and so on. So when I uh, created the forum, my intention was to create a platform where the leaders of the world could come together and to shape the future. Shape does not mean that they decide about the future, but they have to understand the future through dialogue, and they have to look, if possible, for uh, solutions. Uh, that was the original. We sit on the wrong side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now we have our identity again. That's good. No, so the world needs a platform where really leaders from all walks of life can come together. That was the idea. Leaders from politics, leaders from business, leaders from civil society. But what's very important today also is to engage into this dialogue the best minds. And that's the reason why you see so many scientists here, so many people from universities. I think they have a lot to contribute to shape the future. And in addition, I feel in a world which is um, where the medium age is 26 or 27, I think it's very important to also engage the young generation into this interaction to determine the future. So that was the, that was the fundamental idea. Um, and I have to say, uh, I never dreamt of um, uh, let's say the success the organization would have now with close to 700 people, um, all highly trained, 
but um, uh, what has happened uh, in the last 40, 50 years, the need for such an organization became more and more apparent. And that's the reason why we are so successful. Well, thank you. Uh, you mentioned shaping the futures. You emphasize every time. This is a very important concept and idea and you had 44 years ago. Now, what the role the World Economic Forum to play in that particular principle and in today's international world? You see, uh, uh, I mean, uh, there are many organizations, international organizations in the world, which help to, to integrate the world, but they are all uh, departmentalized. You have uh, the, you have the uh, International Monetary Fund, probably as the most important organization together with the UN. They are very important, but you are focusing on financial issues, right. economic issues mainly. Mm -hmm. Then you have the World Trade Organization looking at trade issues. You have the World Health Organization. But today, most of the issues are interconnected. And what we can do is to provide a platform where the decision makers from all sides come together and exchange ideas, look at possible solutions, um, and in such a way we can act as a catalyst for new ideas. I should add one other point. When we look at the political system today, the political system is, and, and to a certain extent also the other systems, we are very much absorbed by crisis management. Um, so we are running after, let's say, what's happening in the world at this particular moment. Uh, there's very little time to look really at the future. Just take the impact of new technologies. Just think, for example, of um, big data or think of uh, self-driven cars. Self-driven cars is a good example. It needs a dialogue of the automobile industry, of the battery industry, of uh, the computer industry. It needs to integrate mayors of cities. It needs to integrate uh, the insurance industry. Um, it needs to integrate even um, uh, the, of course, and foremost, it needs to integrate uh, um, governments in order to set the necessary re regulatory system. So, today, we are living in an ecosystem, and I repeat, where everything depends on many other factors. And the forum, in some way, is first an integrator to bring everybody together, and a catalyst to look more towards the future and less towards the past. Mm -hmm. Now, as you said, you never expect the forum for, for to be such successful and grow rapidly today. You have more than 700 people working for you, have all these top world activities, and uh, you bring not only the business leader, but also political leaders, intellectual leaders, opinion leaders, social media, and all those things together. Now, in my life, also, I saw forums. You know, in and gone, right? I mean, it's so many different forums. But you are very successful. What's your secret? First, uh, I, I would say our age. Uh, over 44 years, we built step-by-step -step confidence and trust. Um, so we are today a trusted partner of uh, uh, governments and business and, uh, and international organizations and so on. Um, but second, um, we are completely neutral, non-political, we are a platform, so uh, people can come to exchange their ideas without feeling they are exposed to certain um, specific expectations. They can uh, really interact. So that's uh, so those are two factors. I would add one, one factor. Uh, I was always fortunate to, to be surrounded by excellent um, people um, who helped me. And what's most important is the forum is not a conference organizer. Um, 
uh, even if uh, meetings play a very important role because they provide the basis for creating trust and confidence, you can speak out, but uh, the forum is an ongoing process, so we have many, many initiatives and our meetings, so for practically all the sessions here, have been prepared um, through task forces, will be followed up. So it's an ongoing process. I take, for example, we have a big initiative on the future of the Internet, because um, the Internet uh, is in, in some ways a live stream for the economy uh, uh, of tomorrow. So we have about 20 people in Geneva working all the time. But not only those 20 people. We have engaged business, we have engaged governments on a long-term basis. So I would say 20% of our activities are um, devoted to, to, um, uh, to conferences, but 80% uh, is the work which is done behind, uh, the substantive work. 20% in conference, 80% behind. Now that's a really interesting, uh, uh, amazing structure because we all thought the forum is a forum, right? It's a conference. So it's not. What are the other 80s activities? If you can give us some examples. In principle, um, we have uh, three types of activities in addition to the conferences. We have initiatives which are relating to the big global issues. For example, um, uh, I mean, um, we, you know we, we have one initiative looking at the future of the financial system. And here, uh, of course, uh, the best partner is the, uh, is the uh, IMF, but the monetary fund. But uh, you are looking at the present issues. What we are doing is looking how new technologies, um, um, digital money and so on, will impact on how, um, uh, on, on the banking system, on the financial systems around the world. So we have, uh, we have another uh, initiative on, let me just go through the initiative you may have seen. We published this week, also in cooperation, by the way, with your organization, but also with the World Bank, with the OECD. We, everybody speaks about how to, how to combine um, economic growth and social inclusion. And some people feel so it's even in contradiction. You can either, either be pro-business or you are in favor of uh, social inclusion. Now, we have developed a conceptual uh, framework which shows, and it contains 17 different factors, which shows that actually um, policies which foster social inclusion and policies which foster uh, economic growth are compatible and are even reinforcing each and to another. You know also our, our work in the competitiveness area, uh, where we measure governments around the world uh, on the basis of their national competitiveness. So there are a lot uh, um, of initiatives which are related to global issues global comparisons and so on. But then we have the regional activities. Uh, so for you referred to the meeting in the Middle East. Uh, the forum, since the beginning, I believed very much in what we call emerging markets. And the fact that uh, I invited uh, uh, the first Chinese delegation as early as late 78 to participate 79 at the annual meeting, I think, uh, is a proof of, of our commitment uh, to, to engage countries, not only when they are powerful, but also when they are in, 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 in uh, undergoing uh, development. And um, uh, so we have regional uh, activities. We have, for example, an initiative, how to create jobs in the Middle East, because we feel uh, this is absolutely essential to, to give those people uh, the feeling of a future. So, we have activities regionally in Latin America, in, in, in Africa, in the Middle East, 
in East Asia. Of course, we are very present here. And finally, maybe most important for most of you are our uh, activities um, related to different industries. Today, inside the forum, we have 20 different industries. And each of those industries is undergoing substantial change. With the new technologies, the health industry will look very different in 10 years from now. Transportation, logistics industry will look very different. And I could go on and so on. And we help the industries to recognize the changes they have to face and the policies they have to undertake uh, to master uh, their future. Now, you mentioned China. You visited China many, many times. But although I heard, I'm not sure, you're not a particularly like a hot and a spicy Chinese food. And, uh, but the question is, why is China, why do you think it's important to bring China to the foreign? And what is the cooperation and the relationship between the China and the foreign today? If you, if you allow me, um, I mean, I, I just would may, um, be a little bit personal um, as far as China is concerned. When I came first time here in 79, I was invited, and I was invited in the old um, Beijing duck restaurant, and I didn't know Mao Tai, and I was offered Mao Tai, and having no idea about uh, how strong it is, I drank 14 Mao Tais, and it gave me a very bad reputation at the beginning. <laughs> and as far as spicy food is concerned, um, I, I, I like so much spicy food. And um, two weeks ago, the, the um, uh, Chinese ambassador in, in, in Geneva invited me for dinner. And um, very polite, he asked my office um, what food I would like to have. And my office said, uh, very hot food. So, um, oh, so I got the wrong information. So, it, it was, uh, so the ambassador asked, of course, his cook to, to, to provide, to cook very, very spicy food. And it was so spicy, I liked it, but I was wondering why nobody around at the table really ate this evening. <laughs> so you can eat very hot and spicy can, food. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I that's like wonderful. It. So what about the relationship and the cooperation with China? China is for the World Economic Forum very important. I, I, when, when I came uh, first time to China, 79, and then every year, uh, at least once, uh, sometimes two, very often even three times, uh, I felt a special affinity with this country. I like the culture. Um, I like uh, the people. Uh, I'm a very um, curious person. Um, so we started actually our first meetings as early as 79. And at that moment, nobody would have, re would have thought that China in the year uh, 2015 would be the second largest economy in the world. It was my belief in China, which um, uh, let's say created a special attachment to China. Today, of course, it's not only um, an emotional reason, I think it's also um, a rational um, consideration. Um, nothing can happen in the world anymore um, without China. You have seen uh, how uh, the, the uh, troubles which we saw at the, at, at the uh, stock markets had a ripple effect around the world, which in my opinion was not justified because uh, it was uh, taking a too short-term view. But um, um, we, we want to make sure, there's a lot of discussion what, what, what um, uh, the place of China is in international organizations, like uh, also um, in, in your organization. Uh, for us, in any case, China is a partner um, uh, in its full weight 
um, and we would like to engage uh, China not only in our meetings. Um, of course, we have great participation, um, but we would like to engage China in the other 80% what we are doing, in the different initiatives. For example, take the, the infrastructure initiative which we have. Um, um, and we work also together, by the way, very closely always with the country which has the presidency of the G20. So I will be um, uh, at the next G20 meeting in Ankara, uh, in, uh, in the south of, in Antalya, in the south of Turkey. We have been associated with the work since quite some time. But we would like to, to, to make sure that Chinese um, uh, governmental institutions and business um, is very much universities are very much engaged in the ongoing work of the World Economic Forum. Good, thank you. Uh, let's come back to the cooperation with China because you focus on the other 80s. I think that's really a big area. Mm. But I think that many people here may have a question and a comments uh, to uh, Klaus. I think uh, at this time probably it's a good time to open the floor. So uh, anyone uh, have a question or comments or please uh, uh, make uh, a question or comments in short, identify yourself. I see the hands in that corner. Yes, gentlemen, please. Yes, please. You need a mic? Okay, mic is coming. Well, I'm Prakash Hinduja from Hinduja Group of Companies. I would like, I have a very high regards for Professor Schwab. I've been knowing him for the last 33 years, attending Davos all the time, as I've been here in Dalian for the first time. I would like to ask him a question as he knows India and China, both the countries so well. What would be his synergy with this financial crisis which have taken place in China? How could India and China complementary benefit from each other? I would like to have his advice in this particular issue. Thank you, Klaus. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Hindu Shah. And thank you for your loyalty and your, your partnership. Um, I'm very optimistic about the future of, let me start first with China. Um, of course, uh, you cannot grow uh, continuously at uh, um, 10% because I, I was calculating, I was calculating if you, if you grow by uh, 10% and you have a volume of um, a, G, a, a national GDP of one trillion, which was the case about uh, 14, 15 years ago, uh, then you have to add, um, with one trillion, uh, you, you have to add um, 70, no, seven, now I have to, with 10%, uh, you have to add 100 billion uh, to, your, to your GDP. But if you have the growth, if you are an economy as China is today, if I'm not mistaken, of 10 trillion, and you grow by 10%, you have to add an economy of the side of um, Switzerland or um, Indonesia uh, to the economy. And this is, I mean, we, not sustainable uh, over the long run. So I think uh, there will be a new normal in, in, in China. Um, but still a new normal with very high uh, growth rates in a global comparison. Now, uh, India uh, is a, a late starter, if I may say so. Now with, with uh, the new um, prime minister, uh, the uh, macroeconomic and microeconomic dis uh, conditions are are created to, to, um, to do the catch-up, but I'm not, it's not Chinese versus India. I think it's China and India, and uh, I'm, I'm very happy that the, with the um, uh, Silk Road Initiative and so on, that the two countries will move closer together by strengthening communication roads and so on. So. Um, uh, I, I think it's, it's wrong to say either or. Um, uh, 
I, I think it's as well China as India. Okay. Thank you. Any uh, other question or con yeah, the gentleman in the middle, yeah. Uh, I'm helping Chinese companies to do overseas investment. Okay. Uh, I'm with uh, Henry Corporation helping Chinese with internationalization. In 2014, China become a capital outflowing country instead of an inflow country. Therefore, a lot of Chinese companies make uh, international investment. Well. Uh, we have uh, state-owned companies and private companies and also high-tech individuals. So will uh, the forum help uh, provide more support and assistance or, or provide a bigger platform? Broad. Well, the forum can help them provide the useful recommendations and the consultation. I, I first welcome the internationalization of uh, uh, China's business and if, if you live in Switzerland, um, look at our big um, companies, Nestle, Roche, uh, ABB. Uh, they have more than 90% of their operations abroad. Um, why shouldn't the same happen? Of course, China has a much bigger internal market. But in a globalized economy, that companies go abroad should be encouraged. Um, now, how can the forum help? I think what is very important for Chinese uh, business leaders is to understand the global context, to see, uh, to create trustful rela relations. I think it's very important uh, not just to invest, but to come, become true partners. And if you want to be a pa partner, I think you have to understand the environment, the political, the economic environment, and here the forum can help very well. I'm, I'm um, uh, for example, we have a very big meeting in, it's the, the most important meeting in Africa, the most important meeting in East Asia. Um, uh, we will have a big meeting in, 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 um, in India. Uh, I'm always a little bit surprised how few Chinese are participating. Um, those are the best opportunity to really understand and to feel what the situation in a country is. And when you have this feeling, this sensitivity, I think then you will establish also uh, the necessary base for being trusted and not just be a, an investor, but a trusted and welcomed investor. So this is very interesting advice. And, uh Klaus, what I think Klaus tried to say, uh, and before your company move out, you should attend more World Economic Forum conference to understand what is the global situation. Yeah. But I guess Klaus is a little shy. You should invite him, being your member, and you can give him a discount fee. Exactly. <laughs> Bye -bye. Oh, the gentleman have a follow-up question? No, 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 I'm sorry, I cannot give you. I saw the lady behind, yeah. Lady behind, yeah. Then the lady front. Okay, the lady behind the second, yeah. Uh, hello, Mr. So, uh, so I, I have two questions, and uh, I'm not sure which, uh, uh, do you know, uh, I'm not sure how much you know about China's eco economic now, and you know, you, you choose Dalian to have the, the World for Economic Forum, and Dalian is located in northeast of China, and you know, the economic of northeast is now a really a problem for Chinese governments, uh, governors, and uh, uh, because of, uh, uh, in years ago it is it is uh, the big brother of, of China's cities, uh, China's uh, regions, but, but now it is uh, they have been the they have they have fall, fallen behind very 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 behind, and uh, do do you have any advice for the local governors to? Stimulate the economic. <laughs> now that's uh, uh, class is uh, challenging because they ask you to provide the advice for the local government in the Dalian and the region. First, yeah, thank you. Uh, no, thank you for your question. And first, uh, we are um, uh, we are loyal. We started our meeting here when uh, Dalian was, and uh, at that time also Tianjin were 
at the forefront of interest. Uh, now I know the south of Ch China, Shenzhen, and so on have uh, developed very fast and are very attractive. Uh, but we are loyal to our old friends, and maybe even now uh, our presence is more needed here uh, than before. Um, as far as uh, advice to the local government is concerned, I would say um, we, the North is very much uh, still um, uh, structured to a certain extent, not entirely unnecessary, but around traditional industries. And what we are speaking here about, it's mainly uh, science, technology, innovation, and sustainability. So um, my advice would be um, promote, promote innovative industries. Yeah, they good, are the future. Good point, thank you. I guess the lady comes from South, Guangdong, or Shenzhen. Uh, yes, the girl behind. Yes, the lady, yes. Um, there's a saying goes that the, um, the downturn of China's economic, the devaluation of RMB, and the instability of Chinese uh, stock market caused the world stock market fail. How do you think about that? And another question is for Mr. Zhu. That, uh, no, no, no question for me. I'm the moderator. Okay. okay. You can <laughs> okay. hold on your question okay, to my just session for you. later. Yeah. Okay, just for <laughs> you both. How do you think that um, yeah. uh, for IMB to realize the internationalization, how long does yeah. it take to realize that? <laughs> That's my first second question. Yeah, the question is very common on the current China economic situation. Yeah. yeah. Thank uh, you. I, 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 as I mentioned before, I think we have to look at the long-term uh, potential of China. Um, uh, China, of course, has uh, some imbalances, but I'm, I'm uh, confident that those uh, imbalances are well-managed. Um, as I said before, I, my outlook for China is positive, and um, the new normal will be very well-managed. So, um, I think uh, we also have to um, make a distinction between speculatory moves uh, at the stock exchange and really long-term placements and investments. Thank you. Any, wow, there's a lot of hands. Let's have a gentleman here yeah, in, the, in the front yeah, first, and the lady, or also the gentleman here. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, the front lady gentleman, yes. Yes. Uh, just want to ask about this chi China threat that is going around this token. Uh, is the West really comfortable with a strong China, or is the West actually want, do not want China to become so strong anyway? No. Um, I think everything I have said shows that um, uh, we, we have contributed even uh, to, to creating the strengths of China. If I, if I, look, if I look back, and it's now um, over 30 years, how many foreign investors we brought into this country. I remember when I came, when I came first here in 79, it was the beginning of the interest of many companies. I just want to quote Volkswagen, for example, yeah. at the time, Schindler. Um, so I always, I, I believe in, in the world, those should be strong who are the most intelligent, the most hardworking, and the most committed people, not only to, to that's very important, and uh, if you look at our uh, slogan, improving the state of the world, I think it's very important to develop the economy, but at the same time to exercise social responsibility. And this is something, um, I mean, if you allow, if you allow me two comments uh, related to the World Economic Forum again. The first one is, we do not only foster uh, and help business to grow, or countries to grow. I think social responsibility, uh, social inclusiveness, is a very important element in everything what we are doing. And you meet here also quite a number of social entrepreneurs uh, whom we have invited. 
which means people who are entrepreneurs, but not in order to make money, but in order to help humanity. There are great examples here, and I, I would advise you to talk to them. If you allow me, one, one additional comment coming back to uh, earlier questions, the 80% and the 20%. See, let's say, the work which we are doing on a continuous basis um, and uh, the, the conferences. Um, we do not charge for our, we are, we are different from, um, from meetings. We do not charge anymore for our meetings. Davos is, uh, the winter Davos is uh, a little bit different for tax reasons, Swiss tax reasons. But we want to have, pe we want people to be part of a community, part of a community which works together to shape the future in the spirit of committed to improving the state of the world. So we do not charge for meetings. We are financed by partnerships and memberships and this expresses the will and the concept to engage people as members on a long-term basis. And we are in a fortunate situation uh, that uh, we have waiting lists practically for all. I see here my colleague um, uh, Murat Sonras, uh, who is our chief business officer. We, we, have, uh, we have waiting lists and um, uh, we engage only people into our membership and to our partnership where we know they can make a contribution not only to the forum but to the world. Yeah, any uh, other? Yeah, I saw the lady in the front. Uh, yes, please. Then I'll come back to that gentleman. Okay, yeah. The lady. Mm, thanks, Dr. Drew. Um, good afternoon, Dr. Schwab. First of all, I must say that you look much younger than reality. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, I, I, I like to hear. I like to hear that one, yeah. And uh, we all know that what the economy forum would not be that successful without your reputation. But my question is, how would you select your successor to continue its success? Will it be your capable son or other executives? Um, what kind of changes do you expect in future? You know, you. when the lady have a nice words to you, you always have a tough question. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's a tough no, question. No, no. Even tough than the gentleman, yeah. uh, the one he had. Yeah. yeah. No, uh, first, uh, the forum is not a family enterprise. It's an independent foundation. So only the best will succeed. Um, but um, we are now... Uh, recognized by the Swiss government also as an official international institution. And we just adopted, um, adopted by, uh, it has been adopted by our uh, board of trustees, a framework of uh, statutes and bylaws which uh, are a role model for governance of an international institution. Um, so we have all the regulations in place to make sure that one day um, the, the uh, forum needs a successor and um, I can guarantee you, no I cannot guarantee because we don't know, but at least it's my will that it will not be very soon. Um, but when the forum needs a successor, uh, the regulatory framework is here, in addition, in addition I, uh, people look at the forum only, only or very often only uh, at Klaus Schwab. But actually, I have a managing board with every, every large company would envy me for um, the talents I have assembled in my top board. I have the former vice chancellor of Germany, the former uh, foreign minister of Norway, the former CEO of SAP, which is one of the largest company, uh, the former uh, global advisor of the president of one of the um, biggest countries in the world, uh, a former uh, leader in uh, high technology in Silicon Valley. So I have all the elements inside the board, best people, and below the board, um, we, the forum has, the forum is the biggest employer 
of top school graduates in Geneva. So we have a, yeah. we have a, a the forum has about 35, out of the 600, uh, about 35 have a degree from Harvard University, just to give you one university. We have Yale and all the other universities. We have also from China, Chinese University, Xinhua and so on. So the forum is a big um, um, treasure of human resources and Klaus Schwab um, plays a role to coordinate everything, but it's a force which goes far beyond uh, Klaus Schwab. So that's a very nice answer, Klaus. I know this, we just uh, transformed the forum into an uh, international institute, which is very unusual. I recall in the board meeting, you proposed the idea two years ago. We had a lot of debating, we're a little confused, we're not all clear, how can we transform the forum into international institutes, which is very new because we never thought such a type of institute to promote public, uh, private, and uh, partnerships. Why you want to transform into the in international institutes? What is the new institutes will uh, function in the future? The forum, was originally set up as a not-for-profit foundation. Now, um, the forum plays more and more a important role assisting uh, official global governance systems. So, um, we recognizing the situation, uh, the Swiss government um, uh, concluded a official agreement with us um, uh, so we, we, we are institutionalized by government degree. Um, and the reason is that we, as the International Institution for Public-Private uh, Cooperation, are anchored as well in the private as in the public world. We are not a voice of business. We provide a platform for dialogue, but dialogue between business and the public side. It's very important, and by the way, it's also expressed in our governance system. Um, I'm the founder, but we have a system where I report to a, um, now to a governance board and to a board of trustees, and the board of trustees is composed, according to the concept of the forum, by um, one third about our leaders of international organizations like Dr. Chu, uh, Christine Lagarde, the head of OECD, uh, and so on and so on. One third are personalities from civil life, and one third are personalities from business. Uh, you are, I think we have outside, we have um, uh, our latest annual report, which yeah. we just submitted to the Board of Trustees and you are cordially invited. We have it also in Chinese, so you are cordially invited to look for details into the report. Yeah, transform into this new uh, international institutes is a really a big step for forum. It's very important because we have now, um, we are not just, we are not an international NGO anymore. Yeah. We have the same status like the International Red Cross. MF. Or uh, IMF is uh, based is on an intergovernmental yeah. Yeah. Uh, arrangement, but we have the same status like the uh, Olympic uh, oh, yeah. Committee. Yeah. Uh, and of course, uh, having this status, we enjoy also all the privileges of an international organization in, in, in Switzerland uh, and abroad, like. Um, uh, for example, I have diplomatic passport. We have um, uh, we have tax exemption, and I could we can hire from all over the world. Um, uh, and of course, um, it it makes also sure to come back to the last question. It makes also sure that we really uh, not only um, design and adopt, but uh, live up to the highest governance principles which you can have in the world. Yeah. No, this is a, this is a big move. In, in Chinese words, I think it's a new long march. Yeah. And uh, I think this conversation can go
forever. And yeah. but unfortunately, we have only 40. It's, un it's unlimited. It will yeah. go forever. Yeah, it's it's actually, yeah. in Switzerland, it has become a law. Yeah, exactly. So that's a very important step. Now, on the, given the time limitation, I have to close the whole session here. And uh, I would like to take this opportunity to ask everybody to join me to give a big applause to Cloud. And uh, we hope, we wish you look even younger every day, and yeah. as a well, lady says. Yeah. <laughs> and also, we wish the forum ever success. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Chu. And thank you for your interest. And you can be assured that we are here to serve you, to serve China, and to serve the world. Thank you. Thank you, Klaus. <laughs>